You see this wire atoms with eight valence electrons so stable. See this Jesse Garant and Associates? They're the ones that did my CAT scans. Absolutely fabulous people. Very, very good people. Um, now, why are atoms with eight valence electrons so stable? Well, they, they don't have anything more to share or to take in. They're, they're completely surrounding the core and they don't want any more and they don't want to give up any. If they're in between those eight, seven, six, two, one, at one you're on the extremely salty side, at seven you're at the extremely acid side. So at seven you want one more to make eight. At one you want seven to make eight. And then in between is these right here, which is the transition metals. These are what makes your body work. These are what flow through your blood. And I'm going to have my blood work done in an hour. <laughs> and they're going to check and see what chemicals are in my blood. Because you need all those. In order for you to transfer chemistry in your body, which is what you, what you do 24 hours a day, you stop doing that, you have to stabilize. That's when they all try to get the rule of eight chemistry and we're going to go into that right now i'm going to show you what my stuff looks like they have their own ideas of what the rule of eight and all that stuff looks like and i i just I totally disagree well i don't totally disagree but i don't disagree I, I, yeah I will put it. <laughs> well let's put it this way the nucleus is totally wrong so once you're there you got to start all over again and because everything was based on a different type of nucleus, a nucleus of just a gigantic, big, huge positive, and then a bunch of little tiny negatives. It didn't work. Absolutely never worked. It, they would all just go, it, but they, Bohr came up with this model, says this is the way it's going to go from now on. And he said, okay, we'll figure out some other way to make this work. And the nonsense was unbelievable. And I went through every single detail. Not a thing made sense. <laughs> Okay, my friends, Roger Spur, Mud Fossil University. I'm going to show you dark matter and a lot of other things. There it is right there. They call it a muon when it comes through at high speed along with an electron and they crash into another media. The mu and a medium, another, the muon just stays the same as it was. The electron turns into showers. I will show you this right now. And I will show you how they occur and what everything else they do. Now uh, here's the photons, and here's the black par white part black white particle, and here's the black particle. The white particle turns into a shower. The black particle does nothing. The muon and the electron. Okay, here's my claim. Come in here. You saw it was a particle like this. It had a black and a white ball, and it explodes here. The black ball goes away, and the white ball turns into a shower, exactly like I just showed you. And CERN knows this. They just didn't know the black was attached to the white when they started, because they used gigantic particles. We, we started with light, so there's no question that we were already at light, and that black ball walked away from the white particle. So I say that's the muon that they're looking for. That is the electron shower. The muon reattaches instantaneously because it, it doesn't care about being on top of itself. See, it doesn't care at all. He says, you can come around me, I don't care, you just lay right on top of me, no problem. White says, get away from me, explosive particles. That is why there's additional dark matter. Let me show you on a whiteboard. All right, I'm just going to make it real simple for today, quick and easy. I took a red laser, pulse red laser, shot it through a venturi. That's where we saw the particles separate the black and white particles. The photon is what comes out of here, and it would stay that way. We would never separate until it came through here. That's why CERN says you can never get this to happen. It's so unusual. Well, it's not unusual at all if you force it through a venturi. It's exactly what they have done. They didn't realize it. Now, the electron is half of a photon, and that will burn you, the electron. That'll burn right into you because it wants to fuse into you. The white particle wants to join in and the black particles want to pull it in. The photon will bounce. Now, this is what the rule of eight looks like. It's, this is going to be a little confusing. Maybe a lot confusing. Because <laughs> nothing's right. The, the nucleus, let's take hydrogen, because hydrogen and helium. Those are the smallest nucleuses, which all that means 
is they have the smallest number of electrons in a snowball. Hold on a second. They have the smallest number of electrons like this in a snowball. But electrons don't stay like that. The dark matter portions move to the center because they will lay right on top of each other and don't care. We know we can separate them. I showed you that. There is no question. It pushes them to the center. The white ones migrate to the outside. So you always, 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 no matter what material it is, it is coated with painted with electrons, absolutely painted. They will always be on the outside. Now, additionally, more electrons will want to get to that dark matter. That dark matter is attractive as hell. That's what causes the quantum electrons to hang around in their outer orbits. I don't know if you can see this, but this is the dark matter. It's, it, it, it sucks electrons. We know they can separate. So it's not like they're all bar magnets and they can't pr break apart. We know they can. So it, su it sucks all the white particles. Now, the black is in the center. More white ones want to get in there because the black is so attractive. But there's so many white ones around here already. It says, no, you stay out there. It's around 840 electrons in here. All the black parts in the center, the white explosive parts pushing out, and like one more or so electron wants to get in and it says, no, we got enough. Stay out there. Now, there are isotopes and there's different varieties of helium and hydrogen. They, you know, and, I, and they, they understand this. They just don't, they call them isotopes and, um, you know, hydrogen one, hydrogen two, hydrogen three. Most people don't have any idea about that. Now, helium is a different story. Helium appears to have just the right number of electrons that it doesn't have just a single one hanging out here, which is going to be very, very reactive. That sucker there is just barely held on. This has four, apparently, to my mind, they say two. I think it's four are held outside, you know, like a box, a box around it. This doesn't have a box. I can, I can knock that off, bang. You hit this box, it's going to, but it's going to stay together. That's my take. Now, what is a regular atom look like that's not tiny like this. Well, it has a nucleus that has a ton of dark matter in the center, and then I say it has a, a range of the red particles, which are the explosive ones. They will suck, the black particles will suck against them, then the red ones will be out here, and then the black ones, and then the red ones. Now, I don't know why they form exact separate molecules I know why they do it, but I don't, it's, it, there's more to it than that. We got a lot more to go over. It's, it's, it's frequency, which is what Tesla said, the, you know, how fast it's shaking, and, um, you know, vibration, and uh, the dark, what happens here is because the dark particles don't care about being on top of each other, and they love to be next to the white ones, you're going to extra, there's going to be holes in between where the white ones are, and you're going to fill those holes with a bunch of extra black particles. But the white ones will always, they call it the rule of eight, filling out the outside ring of valence electrons, they call, which means outside. I don't think it's like this. I think it's more like this. So you have an outside ring of electrons, and you're always going to want to pull more electrons, you know, into them, into that core, and it sets up certain quantities that become stable. That's really what the nucleus looks like. That gives us all our extra dark matter. It, it, it covers everything. And you can explode that nucleus into every single particle they've ever seen, but have no, because you, you could take a chunk of that. I can make this right here. I can take one of those and end up with this right here. Let me show you what I can end up with by smashing that thing to bits. I can end up with this, and that, I can end up with this, I can end up with this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and not, not complete, which means it's radioactive, and it wants to lose one or take one on. That's radioactivity. I can end up with big chunks. I can end up with something that's this big right here. And that sucker hits you and you're in trouble. It's like a 45 hitting you. These here are like BBs. A, a, an electron 
a couple of electrons won't hurt you. You get static all the time. You touch the ground, beep, you don't die. You could get a little shock, you don't die. But you get shot with a 45, you got to, you're in trouble. It's a big charge, huge. Well, the same thing here. If you get in with the electron range, you're not too bad off. But when you're at Fukushima or someplace like that, man, and you're shooting out chunks of particles that are big as your fist, well, you're in trouble. So they have to sort of settle down. They have to find their happy place where they're stable and stagnant and they're not shooting out particles on, all over the place. Well, I think we could do that a lot better than they're doing it right now. You need Van de Graaff generators, you need Tesla coils, and then you need frequency modulators. You could force enough electrons in, vibrate them into stability, and I think you could make clean up some of this nuclear waste. I, I would try it. Anyway, that's my take on um, electron flood theory. You could force these black ones to sit right on top of each other. They don't care. And then the, the white ones will sit on the outside and try to get in. And then eventually there'll be like an extra one that will try to get in. They call them salts and acids and isotopes and so forth. But when you end up with everything will sit there and not decay and not fall apart, all of that, that means everything has gone into stability. And that means they've pretty much gotten the right number of electrons attached to the right number of other little atoms in there and their atoms and their electrons all hooked together and everybody's happy. Now, if you heat the hell out of it, everybody's going to, these are going to go flying and explode and you're going to fall apart and then you might end up with this. So you, instead of having carbon, you might end up with oxygen or whatever it is. It's a process of pushing away some of these electrons. That's all it is. That's all heat is, is pushing in extra electrons. And they force their way in, and then something happens. They can, if they're not too pushed hard in there, everything will go back to the way it was normally when they leak back out. But if it's too much, and too high, and too much pressure, boop, everything changes. That's called combustion. All right, just a recap. That's what they wanted was the muon electron shower, which is the black ball does nothing. It doesn't emit, it doesn't absorb, it doesn't concuss, it does nothing. All it does is suck white balls back. Now, so that's what CERN and everybody wants. Now, here's what we did. That was the light from the red pulsed laser. The wave is way in front of the particle, and once again, that's the particle. All right, sorry about that. That's the particle. And again, that's the muon and that's the electron. And they turn into electron showers of white cascading particles. And the black ball does nothing whatsoever. Now, I've shown it coming through here, accelerating. We know we can accelerate light. We know we can slow light down. We can see it's expanded here. It's contracted there. It's either going faster or slowing down one or the other. So it doesn't matter. Change in speed. We have a particle here that is very unusual, and it kind of came from this reverse spinner, I believe. So a light has a whole lot of changes to, to look at here. Now you saw the concussion at the Venturi. There's the black ball. The, the muon walked away from the electron showers. It's as simple as that. There's no question whatsoever. Now the particle here was attached, and it's not. you could see it's not doing a whole lot of interacting. Here there's a ton of interaction going on. So it appears that we have increased the value ex exponentially. Secondarily, we know that these black balls have to be everywhere just waiting around because these ones didn't jump over ahead of the white ones and, and reattach. So they're reattaching to something. And those are extra black balls that are just everywhere. And I'm starting to think that, well there's a couple of things I'm starting to think about. But I do start to, I, I, I'm pretty sure I understand now why there are so many extra black balls. They don't mind being right on top of each other. They, they're going to fill in all the voids where the white ones say, get away from me, get away, get away. So they're going to have a minimal amount of white ones and then the black ones say, come on, everybody come together. And I say, no, 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 you white ones get away from me. And, but they'll form these clumps of matter called molecules. So as far as I'm concerned, these are the new particles that are electrons. That's an electron. It consists of a muon and what we can call an electron neutrino, call it whatever you want. But the, the combination of the two of them creates an electron. Back to back, like bar magnets, it's a photon. 
they come in green, red, blue, the whole nine yards. The black does nothing. This is the new particle physics. These make up everything there is. 1840 of these is a neutron. 1839 is a proton. That means it wants to suck in one more to make it a neutron. As they grow and grow and grow in quantity, there's like 1840 or so here, 7,350 of them here. That's all it makes, and I, I think I showed, well, I've shown it hundreds of times, the salt experiments where they turn into perfect arrangements of, of um, atomic structures. And they do it because they reach a resonance frequency vibration stability. I fully understand this now, and I want to engage a debate. And I find it very difficult when I present my evidence for anyone to respond. So uh, that's what I'm asking for. All right, thank you.